What's up everybody, we're back with another raid guide and today we're taking a look at Shadhar the Insatiable on Mythic Difficulty. I'll be going over most of the mechanics, how to deal with them and our overall tactic for this fight. So for this encounter you want 2 tanks, 5 healers and 13 DPS. You want to have at least 2 classes that can dispel slows or roots on other targets like monks or paladins with freedom and tiger's lust. And one or two warlocks helps out a lot with their gateways on this encounter so if you can bring that as well. Other than that this is somewhat of a DPS check so prioritize min maxing single target damage for this fight. With that said, let's take a look at the new mythic mechanics. Starting off, when you're fixated by a living miasma, your movement speed is reduced by 100%. Just like Raffian's Creeping Madness debuff, this 100% slow can be removed by most things that remove slows and snares, like Vengeful Retreat, Disengage with Post Haste, or things like Druid Shapeshift, since I didn't mention that in the Raffian video. You know who you are. And also Freedom or Tiger's Lust can be used to remove this, which is why you want to have at least two of those at your disposable free if you want to play it super safe so whenever somebody gets fixated that can't break the slow themselves just free them and if you have three of these you can free them slash tiger's lust every single fixate although it's not really needed on top of this when the living miasma reaches its target and explodes it will spawn a tasty morsel if a player runs over this they will pick it up and get the slimy residue debuff lasts for three minutes deals a bit of ticking nature damage and it makes it so you cannot pick up another tasty morsel until the debuff runs out. So what are they for? Just like any dog, Shadhar enjoys his snacks so much so that he has a new mythic mechanic called Hungry. Every 4 sec he will gain a stack of Hungry and at 10 stack he throws a hissy fit called Uncontrollably Ravenous, which increases his damage done by 250% which is less than optimal. And feeding the doggo with a tasty morsel will reset his stacks. However, due to the slimy residue debuff, you want to feed every other morsel to him so you don't run out of people that can pick it up. A player that has slimy residue can still be targeted by fixate and if that happens and you're supposed to feed the boss, you need to call out for a backup to pick it up for you and feed Shadhar. So the way we dealt with this is we had gateways going from the sides of the room to where we have our red mark way back in the room. Players that got fixated use the gateway to pop over to where you want to detonate the ad pick up the morsel if Shadhar needs to be fed, then run through Shadhar on your way back to the rest of the raid. To clarify, there is no extra buttons, no clicking, you run over the morsel then run into Shadhar to feed him. I recommend having one person call out all fixates, when to feed and when not to. Something in the line of next fixate feeds boss, next fixate don't feed the boss. And of course if you don't need to use the gateway to get to the red mark then don't. With that said let's go over the fight starting off with phase 1. On pull you want to tank the boss in the middle of the room facing the entrance, range in front of boss, spread out and melee on the sides. Make sure that all fixates are detonated in the far back which is where we have our red mark to reduce raid damage. Make sure to call out the fixates so they know when to feed and when not to. Dodge the breaths and the umbral eruptions. When the boss hits 66% phase 2 starts, which is the burn phase if you will. And as soon as the boss hits the 66% mark you want to pop bloodlust and second pot. We transition into second phase around the 150 mark which means you'll get your 2 minute CDs back for this burn. The goal here is to push it as fast as possible to phase 3 in order to keep the entropic mantle stacks low. Ideally you want to hit phase 3 before your 7th stack of entropic mantle. However it is doable just don't go up to 8 stacks it hurts a lot. Make sure to soak all of the entropic buildups that spawns around the room. Don't be afraid to soak these if you are a tank. It is very important that melee stays on the side of the boss and rangers spread out in front as much as possible during this phase due to the entropic breath. It will randomly target a player so if you're stacked a lot of players will get the 50% reduced healing taken and this fight and specifically this phase is very healing intense so getting that on multiple players is a big no-no. You should also be very liberal with healing pots and health stones and externals during this phase because again it is very healing intense. Tanks should never need externals from healers who use these on DPS to make sure that they survive. For example if you get fixated by a living miasma in this phase you will need a defensive cooldown or external to survive just to be safe. 
Following this, when the boss hits 33%, phase 3 starts. At this point you want all of your raid to stack up near the boss so healers can deal with the entropic stacks that you have. And you really want to overkill it here, we used Link's darkness into barriers just to get through the dot. You want to keep the boss where he runs to when phase 3 starts, then kite him anytime green puddles spawn near him. Players fixated by miasma in this phase should focus on just getting away from the boss to detonate it. But of course, don't forget to feed the hungry doggo every other fixate. Warlocks can change their gateways in this phase if needed, since the back of the room where we have our red mark will now be a lot closer to the boss. However, don't overkill it, you don't need to run max range from the boss, just make sure it detonates a bit away from the raid. And that's pretty much it. If you have the DPS for the fight, the overall mechanics aren't too complicated. Dodge zones, soak in tropic buildups, freedom on fixated players, feed doggo every other morsel, burn phase 2 as fast as possible and heal like maniacs. For you tanks out there, nothing really changes from heroic, make sure the same tank doesn't get dissolved and crush and you'll be fine. And I think that pretty much covers everything. If you have any questions or if you run into any issues during your progression, make sure to hit me up on Facebook or become a Patreon. As a Patreon you will get access to my Discord where you can find things like weak auras, healing notes and a ton of awesome people helping each other out during progression. And it's also the fastest way to get a hold of me. And as always, if you like this video, hit that subscribe button, leave me a like and ring that notification bell. Thank you all for watching and I will see you next time.